first proposed national health insurance. Lyndon Johnson knew more than 50 years ago when he proposed successfully Medicare and Medicaid. And Richard Nixon knew when he proposed the individual mandate. And Bob Dole knew when he proposed the individual mandate. And in Massachusetts, Mitt Romney knew when he proposed the individual mandate. Mr. Speaker, recently, within the last week, the great on-the-street writer Jimmy Breslin died. And amongst the great columns and the great books he wrote, one of them that he wrote that will be with us in a timeless manner was the gang that couldn't shoot straight. That's what this institution has been like for the last 10 days. There were caucuses and there were conferences and people running back and forth with new CBO scores and coming back to the floor with new proposals. And members are put in the position of being offered special arrangements so that they might be brought over the goal line. That, after 61 times they have voted in this House to try to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Well, here's what we have in front of us this afternoon. A CBO score says that 24 million Americans will see either an increase in premiums, they'll lose their insurance, there will be an imposition of an age tax on older Americans, and a tax cut of a trillion dollars. This bill has gone from bad to worse. And if that wasn't enough, to get the votes to pass the bill, they want to cut prescription drug benefits, mental health benefits, hospital benefits, maternity care, and yes, every one of us in this institution, they know a family who is struggling with a loved one's addiction, and they want to roll back that benefit. Recently, the conservative columnist Bill Crystal tweeted, the health care bill doesn't A, lower costs that they have, B, it doesn't improve insurance. C, it doesn't increase liberty. D, it doesn't make health care better. So what's the point? Here's the point. The point is it's a $1 trillion tax cut so that they can change the baseline for their tax cuts that are coming down the road. That's what this is about. Now, the President said he wanted an insurance plan that covered all members of the American family. What they're offering up today is a plan that cuts health insurance for 24 million Mar American family members. It does not increase coverage. It does not lower costs. It does not strengthen consumer protection. So what does it do? Sadly enough, back to the old argument that we've had in this institution for years, a trillion-dollar tax cut for the people at the top in special interest. The former speaker here a minute ago, the chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, he spoke about perfection. I was here when this legislation was authored and helped to write it, and I can tell you this right now. We knew it was not about perfection. But we subscribed to the idea, as was the case with Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, that we would improve it as time went on. We would fix it so that all members of the American family might benefit from the basic notion of access and affordability as it relates to health care. So what do we have here? $839 billion of cuts to Medicaid, which is now long-term care for members of the American family, because you know why? 60% of the Medicaid dollars go to nursing home care, and they want to cut $839 billion to provide a $1 trillion tax cut. Let me tell you, members of the American family can understand that. In Massachusetts, where proudly I can say 100% of the children in our state are covered, 97 percent of the adults in Massachusetts are covered. And guess what? It polls regularly in the high 70s as to customer satisfaction. And a Republican governor of Massachusetts has advised them, go slowly, go carefully. This is not the path that you want to travel down, as well as other governors across the state, the country, who happen to be Republicans. The hard truth here today is they're asking the American family to pay more to get less. And dozens of Republicans have said so today. Secretary Mnuchin recently said there will be absolutely no tax cut for the upper class. I hope that the Republican conference confers with Secretary Mnuchin so they might get their facts straight on this issue. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserved, the gentleman from Texas. The gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, 
Uh, the next speaker is the chairman of the Health Subcommittee and played an invaluable role in solutions to lower health care costs for uh, Americans. I'm pleased and proud to yield three minutes uh, to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. T. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for, three for your leadership in this important matter, and I echo your words with respect to the staff, Emily Murray and her team, as well as Whitney Daphner and Abby Finn in my office. Like you, Mr. Chairman, I had a front row seat in 2009 and in 2010 to the passage of the Affordable Care Act.